Hello, welcome to Juniper Level Botanic Garden, the home of Plant Delight Nursery. Anyone who is uh, willing to answer questions about plants and growing plants and gardens is very often asked, should I fertilize my plants? Um, and I always am reluctant to answer that question other than to say, have you had your soil tested? Um, it's, unless you have your soil tested, you're just um, shooting in the dark. It's like, you know, you feel a little run down, so you're going to pop some vitamins. And, and maybe you need them, maybe you don't. A lot of them aren't going to do any harm. Some vitamins, like vitamin D, you could potentially take too much of because it builds up in the fat in your body. And so um, I, if, I can't help but advise people to have their soil tested. It's so basic. And I am a very happy new owner of a garden. I had been renting for a bunch of years and I've been planting like crazy. I won't invite you into my house because I've been spending nearly all my time in my garden. I figure there's a long winter coming when I can work focus on the house. But I've been I had been wondering about, you know, should I fertilize my garden or not? And I was good. I did a soil test. And in North Carolina it has never taken terribly long to get a soil test results back. Sometimes it comes back surprisingly fast in a, maybe a week or slightly more than a week. Two weeks is uh, pretty common. And it varies around from one state to another. Some states are free. Some states charge year-round. In North Carolina, it's uh, free during the summer months. And it's, there's, I believe, a $4 charge per sample in the winter months. Um, and so... When I got my soil test results back, I was really happy that I had not yet thrown any fertilizer on the ground. Because, um, and I did two samples of two parts of my backyard where I'm currently gardening. And they were uh, similar in some aspects and quite a bit different in di different aspects. And the big surprise was in this garden, the garden that I'm creating that clearly had not been owned by a gardener beforehand because there was turf and a few native trees and that was about it. Clearly not um, one that had been gardened intensively. Um, the big surprise was that in both samples, the uh, soil, the garden, the plants need absolutely no more phosphorus. It had an excess of phosphorus. And one thing that a lot of gardeners do not realize, and we all tend to think more is better, is that at some point phosphorus and potassium can build up to levels that are detrimental. And to add more just makes the situation worse. It's not so much that they are acutely toxic, but when phosphorus and potassium build up to higher levels than ideal, they interrupt the absorption of other elements from the soil. So, and, and so much of the uh, literature and recommendations from professional society is, you know, every, every other day put a 10 pound bag of fertilizer on everything in the garden. I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, and, you know, a after a certain amount of time, uh, soils tend to get an excess of phosphorus and potassium. The same is true with lime. Um, lime can build up and you go from a soil that was maybe started out too acidic. And then if you continue adding lime every single year, you might end up with soil that is neutral or even alkaline. I've seen that happen in three or more gardens I have worked in. They were all parts of the garden that had been gardened for 
uh, won since the 1800s. Well, the chemical fertilizers in lime were not common until after World War II. But, um, you know, in both places, it was crucial that we did a soil test first because to add more lime or fertilizer when it wasn't needed was not uh, beneficial. And so when you take a sample and, you know, go online, I, I can only speak for uh, North Carolina, if you go on to the, um, the NC Department of Agriculture and Crop Science agronomic division and we'll have this on on the website you can print out the form that you use to um, that you submit with your soil sample to have all the instructions for taking a soil sample it's pretty simple you don't need a truckload of sample of soil you only need about a pint it might not even be a pint but somewhere between a cup and a pint the hardest part of submitting a soil sample in North Carolina is folding those dang little cardboard boxes. I think they've gotten slightly easier, but they're never super easy, but you're strong, you'll pull through. And when you get back your soil test results, this is the, th these are my soil test results for my garden, um, you'll see a whole lot of information and maybe it will intimidate you. But what I'm going to tell you is that there's really only a tiny bit of that information you need, need to uh, make use of the soil test and do what your garden needs done. And that is where they tell you what type of fertilizer and the rate to apply it, and as well as how much lime to apply. And for a home garden sample, it's per thousand square foot. Um, it is not per acre. Most of us are not growing acre large gardens. And so, um, you know, this one has, well, and I indicated I was growing a flower garden and the lime recommendations were um, 20 pounds Per, a lime per a thousand square feet and the lovely thing about lime is that it's cheap and then um, notice um, the fertilizer is um, they're recommending an 8024 um, and they're at, at, at recommending 12 pounds of that per thousand square feet and you can see the phosphorus uh, results and the potassium results, this dark bar is completely filled up. It probably goes beyond that. And you know, this is the ideal range, this 50 to 70. I'm not sure what that is, um, but you can see so below optimum, optimum, above optimum. So I am above optimum on phosphorus, so I will never be adding more phosphorus to the garden. Um, I don't think there's any practical way of reducing it. It might go down over time as plants use it, but you know, if the plants are recycling the fertilizer, it doesn't go away, but I need to bring that magnesium, potassium up um, to, you know, into this range. Now, um, the pH in this one uh, result the, on the first soil sample was below 5.8 and they're indicating the optimum range for the widest range of plants is a pH of 5.8 to 6.5. I'm going to quick just go to the, um, oh, wrong page, to the second soil sample where again the phosphorus and the uh, potassium are about the same but the pH is even lower. It's well, here it says a pH of 4.7, that was 5.7. And that is not a one degree difference. That is a, it's a logarithmic scale, so this is, it's many, many folds bigger. Should have looked that up before the test. Now, because 
my um, soil test results are so wonky, a crazy amount of phosphorus and far too little potassium. They, they're telling me to use 8024. You are not going to find an 8024 fertilizer in a garden center. Um, if you were a farmer and you needed enough fertilizer for vast acreage and you uh, there is probably a company in your, out, out in an agricultural district that can manufacture, com they're not really manufacturing, but they're combining ingredients to produce an 8024 fertilizer. I had that done in a garden I took care of in, in, out in the country in Georgia. I went to the same company that all the farmers went to and they made me a ton of the fertilizer, uh, what, um, you know, whatever the three numbers were that I then used in the garden that had an excess of one of those ingredients. So what, what I'm going to have to do, I'll buy a nitrogen source, probably maybe blood meal. Um, and then I'll just put down uh, a, a potassium source. Um, people often use green sand as a potassium source. I was shocked to read the package of green sand. I thought it maybe said that it was 1% potassium. It's not. It's 0.1% potassium. Uh, so it's not a viable source of green sand unless you want to raise the elevation of your garden. Um, so I, there's really not a good organic source of potassium unless you have access to a whole lot of uh, wood ash. So I'm going to use muriate of potash, which you can buy in any garden center. It's really, really, really strong. It's like 60% um, potassium, but there's instructions on the package that, you know, ha how much to apply per square foot. foot. But you know that I've gotten a little bit beyond um, what I really needed to talk about. But the, my main point is, if you have a garden and things aren't doing well, or it's a new garden, have a soil test done so you know exactly what your soil needs, so you're not spending money on stuff you don't need, so you're not applying something that the, the plants don't need. Um, you know, I'd be wasting money if I bought phosphorus because my soil already has an excess of phosphorus. And because I know what it needs, what I, I will follow the directions on the soil test results um, and apply the recommended amount of lime and potassium. And so the results will be that much better than if I was just broadcasting any old thing. Oh, and I should say, you know, I, I, my point, one of my points was if you're intimidated by all this information and it's easy to be, especially if you never had soil science in college, and believe me, that was the best college and I mean, the best class in four years of college, um, the most valuable class. But, uh, you know, my point was just look at the recommendations where it tells you how much lime, if any, and what fertilizer, if any, to apply. And all this information on the bottom, like cation exchange capacity and weight per volume and, uh, you know, the percentage of humic, humic matter per whatever, is valuable information, but... Um, it's not something you need to know, you know, again, just follow um, the recommendations. It's, um, it's pretty ex much exactly like you go to the doctor's office, they run all sorts of uh, tests, and, you know, you can try to figure out what all the test results mean, or you can just, the doctor says, you know, you are a little bit low on iron, so eat, you know, eat a lot of spinach and liver for a couple weeks and you'll be fine. You'll just uh, follow his directions. Though I am 
firm believer in the value of soil tests. If you ever want to know even more about your soil and keeping your soil healthy, attend one of our classes on soils that Tony Avent teaches, and you will go away a much more educated gardener than when you started. Um, you know, the soil is what suppo supports all of the plant life, and uh, it's absolutely essential to the garden. So um, this is not a new soapbox of mine. I've been uh, promoting the value of soil tests for decades and decades, and I truly believe it. Um, and, you know, the other thing is, look at your garden. You, you know, I started off saying, well, if your garden's not doing well, or it's a new garden, have a test results done. But the sort of flip side is if, if your garden is doing well, if it's been established for a long time and things look, uh, you know, perfect, well, maybe don't add any fertilizer, just continuing to mulch it with or, um, compost or some form of organic mulch. That might be all your garden needs to keep it going strong. Well, a whole lot of information. I hope you uh, found that useful, and I hope to see you again in the garden.